uh, this uh, uh, session we pre uh, prepare only one case. So uh, we can see the uh, live case from the Asan Medical Center. Uh, I'm the uh, Dong Choi Several uh, uh, Hospital and uh, my co-chair is, is uh, Richard. Yeah. And Dr. Laird. Hey, Rich, how are you? I, I'm, we're doing great. You know, it's great it's only one case, so uh, we'll have to pass to a phantom room if you're having any difficulties. So I have everything <laughs> set up. No pressure at all, huh? <laughs> I, got, I got no bailout. <laughs> Sorry, no bailouts. So uh, welcome to Lab 4. Uh, I'm joined by uh, Dr. Lee and the team here in Lab 4, so welcome. Uh, we're just actually getting started. Uh, just starting to take our angiograms, uh, but I'll ask uh, Dr. Lee to present the case uh, as we do that. Yes. Uh, let me introduce this uh -oh. case. Oh, can okay. you want to? Oh, wait. Wait. Okay. okay, we have a 62-year-old male uh, patient here. Um, he admitted with uh, symptom of claudication of both the leg actually. The symptom is more uh, severe in his right, but actually the AVI, AVI uh, revealed that the left AVI value was more lower, that it was uh, 0.69, so right uh, with 0.72. Uh, so the, we already took the lower extremity CT angiography and we knew before the intervention that he had a moderate to severe stenosis of left SFA. And uh, you can see the, the angiography we took right now okay. here. This is previous. Okay. So you got that story. So basically bilateral claudication, uh, severe bilateral fempop disease where a lot of calcium on the CT angiogram, as you can see. Uh, no significant iliac artery disease, but you can see right off the bat there's a very bulky uh, exophytic a heavily calcified lesion in the proximal SFA. And then uh, we'll show you the next shot, which captures most of it. You can see now long segment disease with at least two areas of extreme uh, calcification. And then down below in the popliteal segment, Looks pretty good. A little bit of haziness and calcification, but no significant uh, lesions. And then two vessel runoff below the knee, have an occluded anterior tibial artery and a patent perineal and posterior tibial artery. So let's take you back up to the area of interest here and let you kind of chew on this a little bit and see what you think about this terms of our treatment options. Any comments, Dr. Choi or uh, Dr. Heuser? Well, John, one of the things, um, uh, it's dealer's choice on this. It sounds like this patient's symptoms are both, uh, it, it, you say it's a little bit worse on the left side? Okay. His symptoms are a bit worse on the left symptoms side? Symptoms are fairly equivalent. Uh, yeah. his, his disease looks fairly equivalent. His, uh, and uh, his AVIs are about the same, slightly lower on the left, but he's got bilateral symptoms. I'm just gonna advance this crossover sheet a little bit. Uh, it's not quite down far enough. And then uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what I'm thinking and then you can uh, see how you feel about that. Well, as you're gonna tell us that, one of the things that reminds me of, you know, not that many years ago, if this was seen by a, a classic vascular surgeon, he'd probably say, well, your symptoms are not bad enough. There's nothing we need to do. And it's certainly nothing to do below the knee, but I, that's all changed. Uh, patients, uh, quality of life and exercise uh, ability is clearly uh, limited with disease like this. And we should be able to treat this fairly effectively and very safely. Yeah, I think so. It's. Uh not your most straightforward case because of the calcification, um, but absolutely. And <clears throat> these patients get so much better after our interventions, it's a shame to deprive them of that symptomatic improvement uh, just because of old or older dogma. So 
I'll tell you what I'm thinking here, Rich, and uh, and you can uh, let me know how, whether you agree. But I think we ought to uh, debulk this. It's a heavily calcified lesion. It's not going to respond well to uh, to balloon angioplasty alone. And no matter uh, how hard we try, we're not going to make this pretty. So I'm inclined to debulk it. I'm thinking uh, actually turbo hawk here, directional atherectomy with distal embolic protection. Probably use a spider FX. So we'll take a five millimeter spider FX. We're going to need no one fire four wire to cross first. So I don't know if we have a, a, a good O14 like a regalia Asahi yeah, sure. wire. And uh, I, I think yeah, this is a very good uh, case for uh, turbo because uh, the atheroma is very eccentric and also uh, have calcification. So I think the end relatively short, Regal. not long. So I think this is a very good case for uh, turbo atherectomy. So Thank we'll you. start out with this uh, gentle kind of hydrophilic tipped regalia wire and see if we can cross with this. We might, we might need a little bit more uh, bulky wire to get through. We'll see. We'll give this a try first. And then uh, heparin, have we got heparin? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, John, this is uh, Lawrence Garcia. You know, this is the, the specifically the exact type of uh, lesion that's going to be studied in uh, in reality. So, uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, DEF-AR tended to suggest that, uh, that debulking these uh, was probably the right answer uh, for DCB to be useful. I guess the alternative, of course, would be a rotational design, uh, something like Jetstream or, uh, or even CSI to some degree. Uh, if you were planning on doing a rotational device, which would you choose? And then would you still use a uh, distal protection device, as I, I suspect you would? Yeah, I think lesions like this uh, mandate uh, embolic protection. And so uh, I would uh, use it in 100% of calcified lesions like this. I think it's a dealer's choice in terms of the rotational devices. You could use uh, CSI or uh, pathway, jet stream here. Yeah, the other device we sometimes will use will be the Avenger device, which gives a really nice uh, atherectomy uh, result and acutely. The, um, I agree, there's many atherectomy devices we can use. What I like about uh, John's choice is that this is a big vessel. Uh, we need to get a big lumen, and certainly most of us with atherectomized and if given the option, we'd also probably consider a treatment for intimal hyperplasia, either a drug eluting balloon or a drug eluting stent. Richard, I agree that that is still protection for this patient, but how about the jet stream? We have a. Uh, you usually uh, uh, use the distal yeah. protection or, um, for the jet balloon? stream? I think with the jet stream, um, I, I, I think you, it's possible you like could do it without distal protection. Remember, it's, you got two vessel sure. runoff, but I think a lot I of us would probably want to use uh, embolic protection. So uh, the, um, the jet stream is just uh, going to be publishing their registry uh, that uh, was ongoing when Pathway was purchased by Boston, so they stopped it early. But the data would uh, suggest that their embolic rates were low. But, uh, and so you didn't need to use distal protection on all of them. But every time I've ever used it in this kind of exophytic artery, I always capture a lot of debris. Uh, and understand that the jet stream aspirates 80% of what it puts in, so you'll always have some reverberation of stuff. I saw a technique earlier today with our colleagues here in, in Korea that was remarkably good, okay. crossing and then actually doing RXing it. Me. That was you, yeah. yeah. And working it backwards, which I think is, I think yeah. is a very, I was in the, well, in the audience, the but I think that's a very yeah. useful yeah. way of using that device. You know the button over there on. Yeah. Oh, uh, Lawrence or anybody else on the panel? Your, anybody uh, have an experience no, no, no. with the, uh, the is, uh, uh, this that, right there. Uh, okay. that cal so decalcification I'm device? Okay, I'm, I'm blocking on the name. Uh, shockwave. Yeah, shockwave, yeah. Yeah, so no, we would have that be a, a case for the, the PAD trials one. coming to the U.S. We're going to be a member of that. But um, they're, you know, these types of things, of the disruptor of technologies is kind of interesting, right? So their, their initial foray, which was a European trial, um, they had like a 50% uh, 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 restenosis rate, but the idea of 
changing the calcific burden just by disrupting it seemed to be positive. You could actually see it disrupt the calcium. Uh, so I think it's going to be very useful. I haven't had a, a use for it. I haven't used it yet, but uh, this is a type of artery that it would probably be useful for. Right. What's great about peripheral intervention, there's so little data. I mean, <laughs> and that's why I say, what do you use? Well, it depends what study I'm in. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that because we really need to collect that data. I think John is proving the point that these exophytic arteries look like they're open, but in fact, they're Swiss cheese getting yeah. through there. You've got to find a channel. So we switched our wire. We went from the regalia wire to an Estado. Uh, 20 gram. Smart move. And uh, we'll get the wire down and then hopefully be able to deliver the spider test, spider FX through all this stuff. What do you have behind it, John? Is that a CXI? Uh, it's a CXI, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's okay. great. Yeah, these, these stiff uh, Stato wires just are just so great in this application. Yeah. I think it's a fantastic wire. Both the 20 gram and the 30 gram, the 018 wire, I use them an awful lot for fem pop CTOs, tibial CTOs, and even occasionally iliac uh, CTOs. Really uh, remarkably good wires. I haven't had Okay, the... so we'll, uh, we'll probably park our... Uh, Spider FX down there. Do we have the Spider FX sure. ready? Sure. We'll jump you. I haven't had oh, an opportunity to use wire. the uh, CXI device, but uh, quick crosses, the 035 quick cross, if you could deliver it, you can uh, take your wire down, deliver the quick cross, and then put the filter straight through that. Yeah. It saves you a step. Yeah, 6 is really good to support of uh, catheter. Uh, also can be utilized with this. So we got a short wire here. We're going to just have to extend it real quick. Let me ask the panel, uh, do we have to treat that one uh, vessel distally? Uh, is that absolutely necessary? It's not a critical limb patient. Okay. okay. Anybody's thoughts up here? Yeah, I would leave it alone. I think you're, the inflow is the ki kicker here. Yeah. So, okay, so we just extended the wire. We're going to take down the the uh, spider FX. We've got a five millimeter spider FX. And then we'll go ahead and get the turbo hawk uh, ready. We just have the, uh, the LXC. We don't have uh, the long tip. How about this kind of engine? What's that? Oh, Do you want to disconnect the sender? Or just, uh, we just put uh, it? We can oh. disconnect, yeah. Okay. Right. Just for safe. Okay. I need to have you bend it right uh, there. So it's a spider, I think, is a great. Uh, go ahead and bend it and yes. hold it bent. Yeah. Okay. Until the wire comes out. Yeah. It's okay. a great device, but uh, it's a little clunky loaded on the wire. <laughs> I think we'll go ahead and take it down. No, we can stay. Uh, okay, all right. Right there. We can take it down and park it in the popliteal. It always takes a little extra time, but it's worth it. If you've ever chased these emboli, it's, oh man, it's a challenge. Yeah, and I think it's a guaranteed emboli with this calcified lesion without having a filter down there. So we went ahead and uh, pulled out our Estado 20 gram, and now we're going to go in, advancing the uh, Spider FX filter through the delivery catheter. I could actually feel some resistance going through the lesion itself. And now we can come out. Can you guys see that okay? Yes. Yeah, it looks, yeah, it looks great. great.
Okay. So, I think what we'll do is then get positioned up proximal where the tight lesions are. We'll probably address that proximal severe one first. I'm going to actually mag up and we're going to do a, a little bit of a road map. John, what do you think the chances are of being able to cross this primarily? Do you think you'll have to predilate to get the device to cross? I'm hoping not. Uh, we're going to try and do it uh, without predilatation, but let's get a, a three millimeter balloon and have it handy just yeah. to. Okay, we can go ahead and load that up. So right. uh, we've got it turned. Uh, let me see this. We've got it, and it's on in the yep. back. I don't know the other back. 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 Yep. 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 One. Off. On. Oh, okay, right. wanted right. on. Okay, good. Yeah, I'd have to look, but uh, in def LE it was, uh, I think, 15% needed uh, predilatation to deliver. But def calcium, which is where the spider filter got its approval, uh, I don't know how often they had to predilate to deliver. But we, we call that a device failure. We still call that a device failure for def LE. If you have to uh, predilate? Yeah, it, it went under the, uh, the failure group. Well, hopefully this won't be an operator failure. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, we can go to the other room if that's the case. Oh, that's right. We can't. <laughs> maybe we can go. Maybe you can show one of the coronary cases. Exactly. <laughs> I got wire. Thank you. Well, we'll call on Mark Burnett if we have to go to. Oh, that's right. He just sat down up here. <laughs> the uh, device is uh, hydrophilic, so it's sticky when... Uh, Sticky when dry and very slippery when wet. Yeah. So are we six French or seven French? Seven French sheath. They don't have the six French device here. They don't have Hawk One. Still working with Turbo Hawk. So here's the moment of truth. Nice. So far so good. Like a hot okay, knife so through butter. Let me show you. The, so this is the button that we push here to turn the roadmap on and off. Okay. Okay, when I'm on floral. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, push the button. All right. Okay, great, thanks. So I'm gonna rotate. I think we wanna be going out lateral here. What do you think, guys? Agreed. Okay. And one of the clues to the silver hawk when it gets, when it engages the calcium, you'll actually hear it chatter a little bit, okay, particularly the old okay. uh, turbo hawk. The, uh, okay, this thing again. spins at 8,000 RPM. The newer one spins at 12, and it doesn't chatter as much, the, uh, okay. the Hawk 1. So I'll have you hold wire. Yeah. The wire. wire. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and make a pass here. We're going to go slow. Toggle. Okay. 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 Going back to uh, Def LE again, the uh, embolic protection rate in that trial was just under a quarter. It was like 22%. Hmm. Um, the embolic rate was 3.8%, and those that needed intervention was about 1.6%. What I found most interesting on our definitive LE in the Clodican group that, that uh, most of them were used in for femoral popliteal disease, uh, half of the event rates for distal emboli occurred in the folks with distal embolic protection. So wow. despite the embolic protection, it really didn't help. And so it might be that there's a lot of disease in this artery that you obviously is in there, but the, you know, these are fixed wire devices with the filter and the filter moves. Yeah. So one of the things that we did and, and have learned is uh, take the steering tool and you can steer it and lock the wire in place to your sheath. That way you have independent movement and you can actually hold the lock uh, as you pull back and forth. It's just a little um, tip and trick. Hmm. Okay. I'm surprised that we're not getting much chatter and we're not... Uh, really slowing down at all going through this lesion. Tom? Sure looks like you're getting some good cuts though. Yeah. 
I always find it hard to get the laterality of calcium in three dimensions with, uh, with Silverhawk. It's uh, always a challenge in my opinion because you don't know if you're cutting normal tissue or cutting the other thing without getting that chatter. So it, it potentially becomes a problem um, you know, for aneurysmal or deep cuts uh, to the non-disease vessel. Yeah, it's one advantage of the uh, Avenger device, another There's John Simpson improvement <laughs> in order to get the image. But uh... Top, top again. Thank you. So we'll try and do some circumferential cuts here. Trying to go slow in this calcified lesion. Little resistance there. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that seems to be the right rail, huh? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Make one more cut on that side and then we'll come out and take a look. I think it's just getting displaced a little bit by the calcium. I'm not sure it's cutting here that much. We will need to go down and check our filter here too, see if it got displaced. Okay. Thanks, we Parish, yeah. here? Yeah. Sometimes it's very long is um, the cutter uh, is rotated, right? But uh, this reason is relatively short, so it, it, it can maintain the go straight, but how can you maintain the... Well, you've definitely taken a lot straight. of material out. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Uh, I'll have the Jensen back uh, clean out the catheter. I think we'll go down to the second area and, and uh, work on that. Now I'm going to do a little road map here, see if we can locate that lesion. Yeah, the stuff that will come out looks like wet sand. Uh, to your question, um, there's no way to keep it in, in line. Once it starts to cut, if it starts to rotate, you just let it do that. Um, but let's say you, you, you turn it on and it torques on its own. Before you actually start the cut, you can rotate it. There's very little damage to the artery with the thing exposed. As long as you haven't started cutting with a ribbon of any atheroma, you can redirect yourself early. But once it starts, you just generally need to stop, you part off, to... and uh, let the cu cutter do its thing. <laughs> you have to line up the... Uh... What All right, they're working on that. Uh, so this is our second area here. It doesn't look quite as bad now with... Uh, better flow through there, but it's a fairly long area of disease. So we might do a little bit of a longer cut through there. The, uh, the original uh, treatment site actually looked surprisingly good because I didn't really feel like I was getting that much out. There's lots of calcium here. Yeah, it looks like you had a residual of around 40 or 50 percent with the calcium, but you took off the whole you know, mountaintop of, of calcium there. Yeah, I agree. There's a lot removed. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, there's so much stuff in here packed in here, they're having a hard time <laughs> flushing it out here. It's some hard yeah. calcified stuff. Yeah. We have a blue towel in there. 
it comes out like a yeah, wet Yeah, it's, it's a little frustrating sometimes with that device. Yeah. So sometimes you can kind of turn it on and back and that'll help. That being said, pretty much other than the Avenger device, there's nothing that will give that sort of a result without uh, subsequent balloon angioplasty. Uh, this is, this is a big lesion, needs a big cutter. So they want to see. You're not going to get that with CSI or some of the other devices. Exactly. So we're just pulling out some of the plaque now. I had to turn it on to be able to flush some of that stuff out. We don't have a blue towel, which would probably show it best. It's white plaque on white gauze, but. Uh, <laughs> Even a little bit more coming up. Okay, well, I think that's got it. Okay, good. So I think we'll go back in and uh, make uh, another pass down at that second area. And we'll uh, probably do a little bit longer pass because there's a kind of a long segment of moderate disease. It'd be nice to debulk some of that before we go in with DCB. I think we're going to probably want a uh, five uh, millimeter diameter DCB. So five millimeter impact, uh, yeah. Admiral. What's the longest we have? One, 150. Okay, we'll probably want that. But... So Lawrence, would you pre-dilate with a balloon motion. after this uh, atherectomy or just go straight to DCB? I, I'd, I think it would be helpful to look at it, but presuming it looks pristine, I think you could probably just do the DCB. If it doesn't look pristine, I would uh, argue to pre-dilate it just to make sure that you crack all the other areas that you haven't cut and then do the DCB. I do think pre-dilation does sometimes help you be a little bit more precise with your sizing, both, both length and diameter. So we'll see if the device passes through the more proximal lesion now that we have been through there. Yeah, sometimes with using like a focused balloon, you, you worry, well, do I need that expense? And I realize that all these things are expensive. You really want to get a good result and, and okay. Okay. have the DEB there for intimal hyperplasia and not be a, uh, have to be used for a lot of dilation. Okay, so we're going to make our first pass here. I'm going to make a little longer pass. And John, as you're cutting, uh, I didn't see that you looked at the filter. Did you look at the filter to see if it moved or no? No, not yet. Okay. Go Go hmm. I'm going to go maybe just a hair further. I'm going to pull back a little bit. Tom? The cutter uh, didn't seem to go all the way down. Did you part off all the way, or is that uh, is it stuck there? Yeah, it might be stuck there. It may have gotten a little roughed up in the process of uh, of cleaning out the uh, material. Yeah, we either caught a lot of stuff or it. Uh, is a little dinged up. Okay, toggle. Turn off, turn off. Make one little pass here. Okay, I'm gonna, we're gonna have to come out because we're either full or it's uh, a little dinged up. Yeah, sometimes if the uh there's a plaque sitting and the variance on that cutter, it comes out at 0.3 millimeters in height, 0.28 or something like that. And when it ends up getting something around it or near it, then it doesn't part off very well. It, it, it probably is much safer to take it out and then reevaluate what the device looks like. Yeah, our filter's held nice and steady, so that's good. Okay, so I'll have the, the team take a look here and then we'll do a quick angiogram as well. I'll go back up on the mag a little bit. Okay, you ready for a run? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Nice. So we're making progress. I was hoping to have a 9cm cone device so we could uh, collect a little bit more stuff, but all they had was a 6 today. But there is some plaque in there. Yeah. Was there anything behind the cutter when you came out, uh, John? Didn't see it. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, show the audience that. So we got a nice big snake of plaque. I think this picture is a good example of uh, right Glagoff remodeling. You see the calcific nature of the artery. Look at the reference vessel and how much bigger the plaque volume is on the lateral side of this. So it really remodeled itself positively it, as it deposited more calcium in yeah. there. Okay, I think we'll go in and actually make a few more runs here. Great, thanks. Back. I'm inclined to debulk that mid uh, SFA a little bit more. I kind of get a sense that most of the plaque is lateral, so we'll direct a lot of our cuts in that direction. So we got a whole hour here, Rich, so I'm dedicated to use every minute of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, you got work? Okay. I think the uh, TurboHawk device is more dependable and durable than the, the old SilverHawk device, where I have to use it a couple times to start it's not working as well, but uh, Hawk 1 is, I think, clearly an improvement over both of the earlier iterations. Well, I think it's important to understand with these devices, you, you, you don't just go in there, do one or two cuts, and then do everything with the balloon. You're, gonna, uh, you're not going to get the advantage of, of debulking that you can with this device, but you've got to be patient with it, take a lot of cuts. We should make cuts only about as long as the length of the nose cone, about 6 cm. So I'm going to stop here, go ahead and compact, and you can see we're already jamming up a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, that cutter just doesn't look normal through there. I think this may be our last run with this device. Yeah, let's come on out. So what just happened there compared to what will happen with Hawk 1, you know, Hawk 1 spins faster, so when it engages, it tends to, to debulk. This one would chip and then pop through, and that's, that's one of the risks of embolization. Yeah. So we'll do a run here and uh, see what's in the nose cone. We may end up... Just go ahead and dilate after this and see what we end up with and then do DCB. So we'll do a little run. I'm still making some headway. It, looks like, it really does look good. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and take a balloon at this point. We'll, we'll take a, um, a 5 by uh, 150. Uh, okay. Not a DCB, but let's use a regular balloon first. And then we'll follow up with DCB. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pre dilate with a five balloon and see how that looks. Boy, they wish plain. And John, for, for geographic miss, uh, is your routine on pre dill a little shorter than your than your DCB, or how do you how do you make sure you I, miss that? Yeah, I think uh, I think to cover all of this, we're going to have to. Uh, we're going to have to use probably something longer than 15 to, to get it all. So, uh, yeah, normally I would use a shorter. Uh, we, I think we might need two, two uh, DCB to cover the entire length. I, li I like to treat normal to normal, 
with, with DCB as much as possible, kind of like we do with DES in the coronary. So all of that stuff that's there, we'll go ahead and, and uh, cover it with our DCB. So we've got a five balloon. Looks like it's actually an 035 right. balloon, so it may not cross. We'll see. That's going okay. And we'll take it down to that just above that collateral, which I think will be a good landmark for us. Okay. So, so John's using a regular balloon. Anybody on the panel use anything different, a focus balloon or anything like that? Two, four. No strong feelings on this end. Four. So we're inflating on the roadmap. Mark, what? I, th I think after you've done atherectomy that just a regular balloon is fine. I, I wouldn't use focal force at that point. It's just going to bring the cost of the procedure up. Definitely. You have a single shot? Yeah, single shot. Yes, right. okay. okay, nice. So I think the size actually is pretty good here. Mm -hmm. And we may well have covered it all with this... Uh, 15 balloons, so maybe I miscalculated, but um, if we're precise in terms of our positioning, we can just take a 15 DCB and just superimpose it right on top of this. How about, how about balloon pressure? Uh, no luminal or no high at pressure? We're at, we're at 10. 10. So uh, hmm. normally we try and prep the vessel well, so we'll do a good pre dilatation here we've prepped it extra well because we did atherectomy and now we're doing uh, pre dil but we'll leave the balloon up for a little while kind of take sort of sort of an Italian approach to this <laughs> plus we still have 20 minutes to kill <laughs> well John because we have time to kill I do usually uh, a lot of us do three minute inflations on the uh, peripheral there has been data suggesting that that length results in less recoil. Okay. Uh, of course, we're going to use a, DEB, uh, a DCB after this. Any, any thoughts? I always do three minutes with a DCB, uh, absolutely every time at least, and sometimes we'll do longer. Um, and it does make a difference yeah. in terms of the uh, acute angiographic result and the need for stents and just your personal satisfaction with the way the angiogram looks at the end of the case. I think that was a lesson we learned before we had the availability of stents for uh, the femoral artery. When we had to do balloon only, sometimes the only way to get out of it was just to do a long inflation, five minutes, even ten minutes. That's right. It's, it is amazing how what's old again is new again, you know, in the angioplasty world. Let's go ahead and do an angiogram. Okay, definitely. Okay. I mean, up to this point, we haven't seen any slow flow, which tells me our filter's not full of stuff, which is... Encouraging. Good. Very good. Softly smooth. Yeah, it looks good uh, down below. The upper part looks a little chewed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We lost that one branch that, uh, oh, there it is. So we, we dilated down to that medial kind of branch. And then in terms of size, I don't know, five looked about right, don't you think? It looks right, yeah. We could go with uh, five again, high pressure, or six low. My inclination would be just to go with five, kind of high pressure. I'll take the 515 uh, DCB. All right. Okay. And just to avoid geographic miss, I'm going to take it down to that little branch. And then we're going to check the proximal afterwards and see whether we need to add a second balloon. Yeah, I think you will. You know, in terms of the length of balloon inflation, it's amazing. You know, we're at, we're at the 40th reunion of angioplasty, and uh, only recently have we figured out from good, careful data that three minutes uh, in the periphery is basically where the cutoff in terms of reducing yeah. dissection. And then the, the Japanese study showed us three or four years ago that in drug eluting, Stents, of course, you have to get a minimum of, of 60 seconds to get no, no, the uh, no, no, correct no, no, apposition. No, no, no. But it, until then, you know, <laughs> people would do like a real quick in and out, and that was, and it was all uh, mumbo jumbo. So, 
again, 40 years took us to figure out uh, what, at least from a scientific standpoint, would be reasonable. Yeah. So we're working on the smart mask here just to help us again to avoid uh, geographic mist. So I'm going to take the balloon down to uh, that branch, that medial branch. And now we know we have uh, got the area covered that we pre-dilated. Let's go on up there. Okay. Let's go up kind of higher. We'll slowly go up to 12. Travel Timer point. on, please. Timer. Paul. I remember in uh, my early training, there was a whole industry Six. of angioplasty and uh, how Eight. slow you went up, how slow you came down, uh, the duration of the inflation, repeated inflations. And the whole theory was is that you broke the cycle of, uh, of the... We'll need, uh, uh, you I know, the smooth muscle five, cells in the media 40 DCB. recoiling right. with your inflation, but it was all anecdotal information. It was never Wait. scientific. Correct. So we're going to take another DCB more proximal. Uh, I'm going to take a picture when we're done here and just see whether we should go with a, uh, a five or a six. For these uh, calcified yeah, arteries, if you were to bail out to a stent, uh, is there a particular choice of stent that you would use? Uh, uh, bare metal, DES, or interwoven? What would, would be your choice, John? Uh, for this one, uh, no question, I'd use a supera stent uh, for this calcified lesion. Uh, we would, if our, if we were, our strategy was to uh, stent this up front, we would um, probably go with a six millimeter balloon pre dilatation and then pick a five and a half uh, supera stent. Yeah, and I think that's where that question of uh, which balloon would you use, then in those cases, when we were going to go to supera, we generally would want to use a non compliant balloon or something a little or bit a, more strong. Yeah, or a focused oh, type balloon, yeah. Exactly, yeah. to that's crack good. this calcium so that you get the most optimal expansion. You know, the, probably the toughest part about this case is having to do a three-minute inflation on camera. It's a little bit painful, I must admit. So, But we're actually at two minutes already, so time is flying by. John, we're enjoying it immensely on our end. We really are. <laughs> I, I was about to say it's painful on our end, too. <laughs> <laughs> we're having all sorts of fun. <laughs> I have to say it's a pleasure working here at the Assam Medical Center. It's a, such a joy to work in a, such a skilled lab with uh, such good help. All I have to do is show up and pass a few catheters, and that's great. <laughs> the group does a great job. I'd like to ask the panelists for which stent to prefer. Spare stent is available in Korea, but we have also another uh, bare metal stent, uh, uh, many kind of bare metal stent. So, any other? Well, what kind of stent if the make big dissection? And what kind of stent do you prefer? In the case, it is very highly calcified region. Uh, after debulking therapy, the remnant calcification is uh, much more. Uh, uh, in this case, I think the super stent is most suitable for this region because of the radial force and uh, uh, resistance to calcium, the, uh, the power of compression of the calcium overcome okay. to overcome. Yeah. Okay. How about that? Is a supera stand available in Korea? Yes. yes. Sure. Mm. After adectomy, uh, we often use uh, nitrogen stand. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of nitrogen stand? Uh, smart or. Mm. Um, Mm. No, yeah. many times I'm uh, smart. Okay. Should we do an entry? I'm thinking yeah. about uh, using the drug uh, coating stand for the proximal SFA. Mm -hmm. And the digital SFA, I think that the flexible super stand is good option. But I, for the proximal lesions, uh, for the pre-site deployment, pro uh, sup uh, drug coating uh, Stand uh, like yeah, a pit, right double PTX here. is uh, good for yeah, okay. for my for my hands. However, user use DCB and uh, DCB and combined DS. The safety is not 
too much. Uh, yeah. yeah. I have no experience with uh, consumption in use of the CBN. I'm not sure where our lesion is now. Okay. For a contrarian view, in terms of the data, drug-coated balloons versus a drug-eluting stent, okay. the cooked data at, at about four years, clearly, it's superior to drug-coated balloon, but that's not what we're talking about. A calcific lesion like this that needs a supportive stent, do you really need that drug-eluting stent? And I think, um, I think a lot of us would do DCB and then a, uh, like a Sapera stent. Certainly a lesion like this, it's so calcific. Okay. Yes. Six, uh, 560. Yeah, one of the challenges uh, uh, six, six, to all of this is, you know, we infer the data outside of the randomized trial, right? So this this type of lesion I'm would never be enrolled in silver PTX. We, we have both of them. Um, you know, the, the Japanese data for silver is, is much more calcified, the renal failure patients and so forth, and they have a fairly good outcome. So I think to yeah. Rich's point, there's some validity to that, and I think that it's just the randomized trial from silver would never have enrolled this, this patient, right? Right. Agree. And so we're so just kind of looking at the uh, result here and trying to decide on the, the next uh, step. I think we almost covered everything with our balloon, but we came up a little short. We don't have a 40 DCB, so um, our next option is a 60. Yeah. And I'm just kind of debating on terms of the length whether, and also whether to treat that moderate disease while we're here. Or leave yeah. it alone. You know, you you do kind of get sucked into. Oh man, I'm always perfect, sucked into uh, that, John. I'm I'm looking at that too and saying, what should we do there? And we of course, we didn't notice it before because everything lo else looks so crappy. Let's take the five. All right. We, 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 yeah, I think we'll go ahead and uh, just treat it while we're here. It's you have kind 11 of, uh, minutes. You might as well use up the time. Might as well. John. We've got the time. <laughs> Okay, I'll do 11-minute balloon inflation. How's that? <laughs> How's that for excitement? Yeah, if you got the time, we've it, got the beer. I think that was the It old would commercial. look much better at that point. I will, I will give you that. Yeah. I think the rest of it uh, is actually looking pretty good. Sure I'm is. I'm surprised at how well it looks downstream. It yeah. looks really nice. So we kind of treated right up to that fold in the skin, and right above that is the original very heavily calcified lesion, which is looking quite a lot better. I did check our filter. I don't know if you noticed that. The filter is perfect, which is a testimony to my good assistance here because the wire hasn't moved at all. And uh, so we'll go in with this six. And we need to treat right to there. So I think we'll just go ahead and do treat it all. I mean, if this was just plain old balloon angioplasty, I wouldn't do this. But uh, I think with DCB, like we talked about, I like to treat normal, normal as much as possible. Six. So we'll go up slowly up to about uh, 12, and then we'll do a single shot here. Okay, so travel. The size looks good. Mm -hmm. I think it's matched pretty well. John, while we're thinking, well, let me ask my panel, fellow panel members, this is a pretty complicated calcific lesion. Anybody go anagrade in a case like this? No? No, no, the last time. no an anagrade approach on this. Yeah. It, it, pretty calcified. Yeah. Uh, anybody in a thin patient, would you consider that? This approach, literally, uh, contralateral approach, I think is more safe. Eh? When you puncture the anti-grade, you know, we may have a, a risk of bleedings. So. Okay. I we would I'd be a little close to the well. lesion if we went anti-grade in this case. Yeah, it'd be a little snug, yeah. yeah. I think I'd go contralateral, but the, the one advantage of going anti-grade is it seems like when you're using an atherectomy device, if you're ever going to have it get hung up or get a mechanical problem, that's when it's crossing over right at the apex. Yeah. So Lawrence mentioned this earlier, but this would be a, a, re, a reality type of a, a case for the the DART uh, technology or technique, directional atherectomy and anti-resinosis therapy, heavily calcified lesion. Um, I think uh, we'll learn a lot from that trial as to the benefits of debulking prior to drug-coated balloon angioplasty, particularly for these calcified lesions.
So Lawrence, that's randomized uh, atherectomy plus D, uh, DCB versus just DCB. Is that the, the gist of the trial? No, it's a it's a it's a single arm uh, registry, um, and <clears throat> from it's it's supposed to be following DEF AR. The, the issue about definitive AR was that there were two signals out of DEF AR. There was the calcific signal, and then there was a long lesion subset. So reality has actually merged both of those. They've married both of those. So it's long and calcified. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> if you remember, DEF AR had a 90% uh, primary patency on the long lesions, angiographic primary patency. And it was only 60% on the calcific lesions. And then the DCBs, of course, were less than that. But um, it's going to be very interesting to me. And I, I think that reality will either sink or swim early based on a couple things. But one of the things that's going to be interesting to me is what's the overall primary patency. I, I'm a little concerned that they've brought together both heavy calcified and long lesions for this trial, yeah. as opposed to separating them out, right? You could say 20 centimeters individually is a reasonable thing. And then look at the calcific lesions as a separate thing. But they've actually married both in this trial. So it, it'll, it'll be an intriguing trial to see what the results are. So we're uh, just a few more seconds here. We went up to 12 atmospheres. I tend to use a little bit higher pressure inflations with DCB, I guess maybe partly driven by the, uh, the data from the Lutonix trial showing better results when you did uh, nominal or higher pressure inflations. I'm going to check that filter one more time and see how well we're doing. It look, looks like it hasn't moved at all, so I'm very happy with that. I think we'll go ahead and do a couple of pictures here and then uh, recover that filter if we're happy. Okay. That looks pretty good. Sure does. You can see that calcium on the fluoroscopic image. A little bit of recoil there, huh? Mm -hmm. A little bit, yeah. Particularly that, uh, well, well, you, that one area is actually beyond where we treated. Yeah, you, that, that most significant recoil is actually remote to your yeah, treatment that's zone. Actually that's actually distal to where we treated. Exactly. Yeah. It's not severe, but... Uh, what do you guys think? You still got five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't it's think you're obligated darn good. to treat it. I, I, don't I don't think, think you're obligated to treat it. Yeah. I'm going to take a picture where the filter is just to see uh, if there's any obvious stuff in the filter and uh, make sure we don't have any spasm or significant issues down there. Looks oh, like there some... might be something in the filter. Yeah, you captured something. Yeah. Well, it's not the perfect angiographic result, and that always leaves me a little bit unsatisfied, but uh, the lesion that we treated actually looks remarkably good. Just a little bit of stuff down distal which uh, I think we'll probably leave. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and recover the filter. Mm -hmm. We'll give a little nitro, and then we'll check our yeah. distal vessels. Yep. Okay. So I'll take the recovery. Mm -hmm. So 200 of nitro going in. Yeah. Anyone who feels strongly about treating that stuff that's uh, left? No, sir. This is a clodicant, right? So I think you, you've declared victory. I have on a few occasions captured so much calcified plaque in the spider that it had a hard time getting pulled back through the uh, sheath. And you have a hard time even kind of recovering it. So let me mag up just so everybody can see that. Okay. You seeing that on the big screen? Mm -hmm. 
So we'll pull the loop in and then we'll stop. Okay. We don't want to extrude stuff out if we can help help it. Yeah, the only uh, tip and trick that I've used is whenever that bulbous thing comes out, if it does get stuck on the tip, you don't know if you've extruded any of it, then I just suck and flush the sidearm vigorously to confirm that we've cleared it. Yeah, we got some pretty good chunks in the filter there. I'm going to do a, another run here just uh, in the mid part of that vessel just to see how it looks with the wire out. Yeah, I think the spider is uniquely suited for this kind of positioning. It's a nice windsock to capture a lot of debris. Coronary. Coronary. Okay. Okay. Just tracing. Okay. Tracing. Lawrence, do you like the spider better than a nav six? I do. I, as I said, I think I like the ability to lock it down, and I don't have this this concern of the the wire pulling the because once the filter comes back on the nav six, it's very hard to readvance. Um, but I've had also the you know the the instance where I've pushed it further down, so it does become a bit of an issue. Let's go back to DSA. Yeah. Yeah. So we did want a shot on Cine just to get a little bit more kind of fine resolution there, and I think it looks great. You're going to shoot the runoff now, John? Yep. Luckily, Dr. Lee has very strong hands. <laughs> <laughs> Do my best. Look at that, will you? I think you're He's going to push so hard the AT will open up. There you go. <laughs> Just out of spite. So were you guys able to see the filter there? Yeah, yeah. Did you get a look at that? Yeah, we could see it. It's pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah. It's a pretty, uh, pretty good chunk of stuff there. I don't know if we can mag in for the audience. I have a feeling that if you hadn't had that filter, that last angio wouldn't have been as pretty. <laughs> yeah. Agree. And this stuff uh, isn't going to dissolve with uh, TPA. This is, uh, yeah. you know, it might not, might not aspirate out so easy either with a, with an export or something like that, you need something bigger. Yeah. So I don't know. I think uh, over, overall we got a nice result. Nice clean angiographic result. Good flow. No distal embolization. And uh, I think uh, all in all, uh, a, a good demonstration of the dart technique uh, in a case where you have a lot of calcium potential to get a really bad result with balloon angioplasty alone, and also potential for uh, difficulty with drug uptake with all that bulky uh, luminal calcium. Yeah, it looks great, John. Very good job. <laughs> it looks to be about 5 o'clock. Are we yeah, doing okay? Right on time. Five great job. They cut them off. <laughs> <laughs> All done. Thank you. Awesome job.